Hello, good evening. It's uh, Neil Fazali, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the US markets for Monday's trading the 29th of August 2016. Please be sure to visit Trade Signal, signals and market updates from leading providers. And you can certainly download the app from the Google Play and the Apple App Store. That's at www.tradesignaler.com. Okay, now, how do we uh, decipher Miss Yellen's post-Jackson whole speech, okay? Uh, again, there's a lot of uh, views out there, a lot of reading over the weekend. How do we interpret it? Is it hawkish? Is it dovish? Is it hawkishly dovish? Is it hawk dovishly hawkish, etc., etc.? I mean, there's so many interpretations out there, so many uh, understanding uh, or cer certain ways of understanding, etc. And really, it's our job to, to review price action now, given the fact that I was actually up at one time during the week and then I actually gave up the gain, so I finished minus 40 odd in the 40 odd negative for the week. So again, very hard to understand exactly what the uh, the actual uh, Jackson Hole speech meant. Now, again, it's our job to uh, obviously uh, uh, dissect exactly what's being said and uh, try to interpret that in terms of price action, obviously markets as well. So let's certainly start to do that. Okay. So we know that U.S. markets certainly were flushed towards the close on the uh, on the Friday. Certainly uh, hits hard. Okay. Uh, although the Nasdaq did actually come back towards the end, but nevertheless, certainly hit hard. Okay, so let's try and understand as to why and and what the uh, potential uh, obviously repercussions will be going into Monday. Now, first and foremost, what did Miss uh, Miss Yellen actually state? Now, her um, stance really was more or less um, in line, or she certainly sent out the actual uh, signals in advance by uh, Mr. Fisher via Mr. Kaplan via George, okay, but the market certainly ignored that, didn't believe in her. So really, it was more of a, and even after the actual event as well, uh, she wasn't as hawkish as everybody expected, uh, and um, the market certainly started to rise in the back of this so-called QE talk, okay, uh, and uh, the equities and uh, currencies etc. Interpreting that as overtly uh, dovish. Now that wasn't the case, and then obviously market reality kicked in. And the market certainly went into a spiral. Now, initially, given the fact that we had the rally higher, I expected the markets were embracing the narrative that yes, for more QEs on 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 route, and we're in a win-win situation with stronger growth. We're never going to raise rates. Blah 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 blah. If things turn bad, then obviously you have the QE side effect or QE uh, hedge in the background, and uh, that obviously sent equities higher initially before we reverse quite sharply. Now. If I move over to the uh, NASDAQ, we can certainly see that. Initially, we had this pop higher to uh, 4816. I was actually stopped out there. I bought the uh, the, the actual sell-off. I was stopped out below here as well. So certainly whipsawed on the NASDAQ on Friday twice for minus 60. So really frustrating, very, very frustrating. But nevertheless, that's part of trading, folks. And you just have to live and learn, okay, and, and continue. Now, we did actually get a rally towards the close with the fact that initially uh, investors believed in the QE hedge. We rallied higher. Then investors started to dissect the fact that, oh, okay, we are actually going to be raising rates. Sell off, okay, once we sold off, we hit the double bottom. Oh, it's uh, basically the theory was, oh, it doesn't matter. Uh, we have, uh, Yellen has our back. If things go sour, then obviously more QE. And then obviously markets started to rally again. Okay, so markets started to rally again. Okay, markets started to rally again, so. Okay, so again, this is the narrative, okay, so QE. Rally, hawkish fear, QE rally. That's probably the best way of explaining it, okay? That's definitely the best way of explaining it, okay, from a fundamental perspective. And you can see that in the chart of uh, equities, but you're failing to see that in the chart of the Aussie. And the, or the dollar, should I say. Let's just bring the chart of the dollar. You know, the Aussie dollar will be fine, okay? Aussie dollar here, you can see that we've so initially QE rally, sold off. And we've started to stabilize now. I'm looking for a potential pop on the fact of equities moving higher. And given the fact that investors initially nobody believed in the fact that Michelle was going to hike rates, and she certainly has come in hawkish, and that certainly seems to be the uh, the certainly uh, overriding factor at the moment. As you can see here with the Aussie, we were looking for potential push higher back up to that 7725, and the market certainly has taken a turn for the worse. So interesting, okay, very, very interesting going into next week. Uh, certainly, the assumption or the presumption that Miss Yellen will never hike rates is no longer there. So the Aussie and uh, the Kiwi and um, the uh, Euro USD certainly will be easy, much more easier to trade. Okay, it certainly the bearish setups will certainly pay you dividends. Okay, so certainly bear that in mind. Okay, now in terms of equities, now let's try and decipher this market. Okay, uh, now that I know that was the fundamental backdrop, really let's just take each data point as it comes, and we have to presume now they are going to be rate hikes. Okay, so I'm going to start off with the Russell as always. Russell is the leader. Okay, 
So let's start off with the Russell first and foremost. So Russell 2000. Here we go. That's the IWN. Let's go to the IWM first of all. Okay, IWM. Okay. So let's start with the daily chart of the Russell. Okay. Now the Russell itself has held resistance. The weekly chart of the Russell certainly putting in a doji candle. No real sign of of any reversal yeah like i said it can certainly continue to move higher given the fact that the weekly chart is on a tear okay but the daily chart certainly is starting to flag some warning signals okay no real conviction in this potential move higher uh, and again one should exercise caution you have this uh, key diagonal trend line here okay so this is the one that i would follow for now taking the pivot low just connecting the lows and you certainly seem to be making some sort of rising contracting wedge pattern so again a warning sign 60 minute chart Mm, not looking good folks not looking good okay again i'm doing this in the most objective way possible i don't actually have any positions on equities okay just make that making you aware in advance the only position that i actually have going into front into uh, well, over friday uh, into monday is actually a uh, along on the aussie so this is i'm giving you my analysis just totally objectively here folks no inherent bias okay so very important to understand that and it's very important to do that as well over the weekend even if you do have a position Certainly look at the market as objective as you can and totally forget about your existing position and challenge the status quo. So for me, for me the uh, the actual um, Russell certainly has put in a double top and you have this potential pending H&S formation. You have a uh, unfilled gap below, okay? So the unfilled gap remains at 120.5, currently 123 handle, okay? We've tested the double top on Russell. It certainly isn't a good sign, okay? Certainly isn't a good sign going into next week, okay? Given the fact that hawkish rhetoric certainly seems to be the uh, the overriding feature, and this so-called QE hedge that Miss Yellen was talking about really is not going to materialise. Okay, it's going to be very hard unless things get very very bad. And again, that's not something that you can uh, certainly uh, focus on. Okay, so the yeah, Russell certainly indicating weakness. Let's look at the uh, the actual uh, S and P 500 now weekly chart. Looking like it wants to potentially retest the breakout level, <clears throat> 2136, 2116. So again, looking for a reversal here. A daily chart has actually closed the gap at 2164. Okay, uh, the next gap that we did have at 2152, but that certainly has closed as well. So for now, it's just a potential double bottom here at 2146. Obviously, if that fails, then you are looking at retesting the breakout. And there is an unfilled gap at 21. 100 that certainly comes into play as well okay so certainly take that into consideration for the s p 500 again we've certainly closed a gap now gap fill bounce certainly is a potential likelihood so certainly be aware of that that certainly is a possibility but again be aware of the largest larger uh, obviously uh, potential situation as well so you uh, so you certainly have this potential hns here okay so you got your double top okay looking at the right shoulder certainly has gone in and now we're looking to potentially break lower. We've closed the gap. Now, from my perspective, really, it's going to be the lower high. It's all about the lower high. Given the fact that the Russell certainly has uh, obviously set its potential HNS and potentially looking for reversal, uh, you are looking for that same weakness on the S&P 500 with gap fill at 2137 below. That certainly needs to close. So certainly watch out for that, okay, going into the close. One of the reasons why I potentially close my position. Now, having said that, if the QE theory starts to gain some ground okay if oil prices start to move higher quite considerably then you certainly have a strong argument for an inverted head and shoulders formation to play out here up to a potential uh, 2180 to up to uh, 2186 so again that's going to be interesting as well so keep an open mind and again asian markets will dictate as to the next direction okay now let's bring up the dow uh, let's look at the uh, dow uh, transportation average first and foremost daily chart the dow transports still remains weak okay so uh, a potential here uh, lower high looking for a lower low now there is a potential um, gap fill that needs to close below okay so again that certainly the market is vulnerable to that being closed as well so look for that gap fill uh, potentially below now you do have uh, another gap below as well uh, the gap is currently at 7500 so watch out for that potential gap and looking for gap fill there okay in terms of the uh, the actual market itself 
Uh, now, in terms of the uh, Dow Industrial Average, let's just bring up the Dow Industrial Average. You certainly have a strong argument for a double top on the Dow as well. Okay, there is an unfilled gap that certainly was closed today or Friday, and looking for an argument to potentially retest the breakout and the unfilled gap below as well. So, Dow Transports weak, Dow Dow certainly weak again, indicating a weaker move. Okay, now whilst we're on here, let's look at the actual VIX. The VIX certainly has made a base. Okay, we tested the higher upper level. Okay, and we certainly started sell off towards the close okay now looking for a potential higher low okay looking for a higher low looking for a higher high and the target certainly remains gap fill at 3270 on the VIX so VIX certainly looking bullish okay and uh, US equity markets looking weak okay right let's bring up the Nasdaq now let's look at the Nasdaq daily chart the Nasdaq first and foremost a doji candle okay indicating weakness okay a potential double top certainly has been uh, set 60 minute chart as well you certainly have a hns formation brewing so it's your left shoulder here your head obviously is double head double 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 top looking for a lower high in the market's flushing now we still haven't closed the gap at 2740 so again market certainly vulnerable to that gap being closed okay so look for further weakness on the nasdaq looking at the biotechs biotechs as you can see here in the daily chart certainly confirmed the double top okay given the fact that obviously uh, miss uh, hillary clinton has certainly uh, talked down the uh, uh, the actual um, crime of uh, the EpiPen, okay, uh, hiking their potential uh, cost of the actual drug itself, I mean, I think sixfold now, and it's getting ridiculous. So again, that certainly will exalt pressure on there as well. Uh, in terms of semiconductors, let's bring up semiconductor daily chart, potential doji candle, looking for reversal. 60 minute chart, okay. We were making higher highs and higher lows, so certainly an argument here for a potential double top and now looking for a reverse. So again, indicating potential weakness, looking for further weakness below. OK, so that certainly is the, a potential game in town in terms of the Nasdaq. And again, given the fact that the VIX is into support as well, everything certainly is positioning to a potential move lower. Let's just look at the financials. Financial sector is very crucial, very important. OK, you certainly held resistance in the financials there looking at a doji candle certainly looking weak on the financial sector on the s p 500 uh, and again on the uh, daily chart the the uh, the actual um financials as well certainly not looking very healthy okay uh, potential rising bullish channel certainly vulnerable to close with the gap fill below so financials certainly looking weak energy sector as always the most probably most important chart okay no real conviction on the way up okay 60 minute chart at the moment still lower high Again, no real conviction, so certainly looking vulnerable. And you certainly have this H&S pattern as well. So you have this weak pattern, lower high, uh, looking for further weakness. And then you do have multiple unfilled gaps below. So energy sector certainly is into uh, certainly into, into resistance as well. Looking at the commodities, uh, this is a commodity index, okay? You are holding gap fill, or you are holding support, okay? So you have to respect that. Okay, let's see exactly which way it goes. You do have an unfilled gap below. If the dollar is starting to rise and you are looking for weakness on the uh, the actual commodity index, if you take the pivot low to pit here, uh, so you certainly are looking at a potential H&S formation as well. So from my perspective, it's not looking healthy, is it, folks? OK, everything you look at here certainly looks weak and does not look healthy. OK, on that note, be sure to visit CFDs.com for your trading needs. I think my summation there is certainly exercise caution into next week and you are looking for further weakness. OK, folks, certainly looking to potentially sell the rips in the equity market. Okay, folks, on that note, good night, good weekend, and uh, hope this is a good prep for